You're welcome to this home tutor class. This is Mira Search Tutor. On this channel, we do a lot of things basically preparing students for white, NECO, and jam examination. If you subscribe to this channel, there are a lot of things you will learn that will make your study very easy. If you subscribe to this channel, your exams, whether JAMP or NECO or WAEG, will be very, very easy. And you're going to come out with flying colors. But for now, we want to quickly do a video on a lesson on the forthcoming physics practical examination. I am here to present to you a few uh, questions or practical on physics, why physics, uh, practical, physics practical examination, which is coming on 24th of September 2021. I see a lot of videos on YouTube and some teachings on social media, Google, where people are trying to predict and teach people what they should expect on the 24th of September 2021 concerning physics practical examination. But I noticed that those who have been doing that are just giving a repetition of 2009 uh, physics uh, practical question, especially question one for the mechanics. But based on the instruction that WAG has sent and uh, that we should prepare for the experiment, the, the expected experiment is going to be a little bit different from what the students were given in 2009. So here I want to present to you what you should expect in the question one of this year physics practical physics practical examination. I am by name Andrew Obanisha. As you are well aware that why physics practical and so three experiments students are expected to perform two out of the three experiments for 50 marks. Question one is usually on mechanics, question two is usually on optics or heat, and question three is basically on electricity. In this video, we just want to present only question one, uh, which is on mechanics, and this experiment, as you can see on the screen, we have the setup or the diagram, for this experiment, you have two little stands, uh, a meter rule suspended by two parallel threads, and the length of the thread is label H, the distance between the thread is D, and then you have two pairs of masses. They are actually equal masses placed on uh, either side of the center of gravity of the meter rule. Uh, I know that in the question you'll be told where to put the thread, but in this particular presentation, one of the thread will be placed at the 10 centimeter mark and the other one will be placed at the 90 centimeter mark. Then the two masses, one will be placed at 15 centimeter mark and the other one will be placed at the 85 centimeter mark. All right, so the distance between the thread is labeled as D, and the distance between the masses is labeled as X. Now, in this experiment, having done the setup like this, uh, the oscillation is not horizontal. The oscillation is vertical. That is, is a vertical oscillation about the axis of the center of gravity. So you give the meter rule a little tilt to one side, 
as if you want to turn it clockwise or you want to turn it anti-clockwise. Just a little twist and then you allow it to oscillate vertically along the center of gravity of the meter row. So this is a typical question you should expect. You are provided with two meter rules and other necessary apparatus. Place one of the rules on the weighing balance. Read and recall the mass M of the meter row. In 2009, the students were only given a meter rule whose mass has already been determined by the teacher. But in this experiment, the students are expected to determine the mass of the meter rule themselves by placing it on the weighing balance. So with the graduated phase of the rule facing upwards, suspend the meter rule by two parallel threads of length h equals 50 centimeters, each at the 10 centimeter and 90 centimeter marks of the rule respectively. This is my own uh, assumption. In the real question, H may not be 50 centimeters, it can be 60, it can be 70. And the thread may not be placed at 10 and 90 centimeters, but you will be told what the length of the thread should be and where the positions on the meter row where the thread should be placed. Read and recall the value of D in meters. D is the distance between the two threads. All right? So you have to read and uh, the, recall the value of D in meters. Take note, in meters. Attach a mass N equals 10 grams each at the 15 centimeters and 85 centimeter mass respectively on the meter row, right? And then you have to evaluate R, where R is M, as capital M, which is the mass of the meter row, plus 2M, small m, all right? M is the mass, the auxiliary mass added, and there are two of them. So that's why you have 2M. So your R will be M plus QM, and then you have to evaluate R inverse, or 1 over R. So read and recall the distance X between the masses. Set the rule into a small angular oscillation about the vertical axis through its center of gravity. Determine the time T, that small t, for 20 oscillations. Evaluate the period of T and T squared. Now, keeping H, D, and X constant, H is the, high, is the length of the thread, D is the distance between the thread, X is the distance between the masses. Keeping H, D, and X constant throughout the experiment, repeat the procedure for other values of M equals 20 grams, 30 grams, 50 grams and 70 grams. In each case, evaluate R, 1 over R, and the corresponding values of small t, capital T, and capital T squared. Tabulate your readings, and then you are expected to plot a graph of t squared on the vertical axis and 1 over R on the horizontal axis. Determine the slope S of the graph. Evaluate K, which is equal to S over Q, and P, which is equal to half the square root of K over R, where Q is 4 over D squared. So the graph, sorry, the table, the composite table is expected to look like this. And then your graph is a straight line graph passing through the origin. Now, I want to give a background theory so that you actually know what the experiment is all about.